Hey guys, Casey in the kitchen, and today I'm gonna show you how I make baked orzo. And I am using our new enameled cast iron Dutch oven. I love it, it is amazing to use. I love cast iron, but this is like a step up from that because of the enamel on the on the cast iron, it makes it so easy to clean. So like I said, today I am showing you a recipe called baked orzo. Um, I'm gonna show you my fast version to it. You would start it on the stove top and then you can actually finish it off in the oven. I think I'm gonna leave it right here on the stove top. With this enameled cast iron, you can use it on the stove top. You can put it in the oven. I love to bake bread in here. I actually preheat the whole Dutch oven and the lid, and then I put my proofed bread right down inside of it, and it bakes beautiful. It gets nice and crispy on the outside, and then it is soft, beautiful bread on the inside. So down inside of here, I have just started some of my garlic infused canola oil. You could also use just olive oil would be fine as well. We're going to get that nice and hot again with cast iron. It's important that you let it heat up. It's going to get that nice sear on it that you are looking for. So while that's heating up, I'm going to show you over here. I've already done the first batch of my onion and peppers. Now you want two different peppers. Um, you can choose whatever different co color you want. You could do green or red or yellow or orange or combination, whatever you choose, and onion. You can do a white onion. I have a red onion today. So I took half of my onion and one of my peppers and I put it down in my manual food processor and chopped it up. And I'm gonna do that with the second half with you guys as well. So first, I'm just gonna show you guys, uh, now that I have this chopped up, I'm gonna take the blade out our oil is getting nice and hot and I'm going to go ahead and uh, scrape this first part out and then we'll do the second half. So I used a yellow onion and like I said half of a red pepper to start. So I'm going to go ahead and put the blade back in. It's a three bowed blade so it continually pulls everything up and through. So I have my half of an onion and I've got a red pepper now. And I just kind of chunked that up, chopped it up a little bit so that it e easily can move around. We're gonna put the lid on, it just sets down on. I don't have to twist it on or anything. I'm gonna unlock the handle here. And then this, you can use it right or left. I am a right hander, so all you're gonna do is until it is as chopped up as you want. This is great for dips and spreads, salsas, all kinds of stuff like that. And then it's super easy to clean up too. You just want to hand wipe the lid here. Uh, this does lock back down in place. I'll show you that. And then you're going to hand wipe the lid and the bowl and the blade can actually both go in the dishwasher or you can hand wash it. All right, so we've got our second pepper and second half of an onion in here. Get that cooking down inside of here. Now we're just gonna cook these peppers and onions, oh, for two to three minutes, just to start to get some brown on them. When those are done cooking, we are going to add in our our beans. Now the recipe I usually use, I use uh, garbanzo beans and those are delicious in this and actually replace you having to use any kind of meat. They are a great source of protein. Uh, today I'm going to mix it up and I'm using Great Northern beans. So really whatever you want for this, this would also be a great place for you to add in maybe chicken or sausage, anything that you want to add to this. Um, we're also going to add in some seasonings. We're going to use our Greek seasoning. We're going to use two tablespoons of that. So I'm just going to measure that out right here in our lid, which is a tablespoon. 
And I'm gonna add in just a little bit of cayenne pepper. Just give it a little bit of a kick. You could, of course, skip that step. All right, so those are getting nice and soft down in there. And we're just gonna start adding in the rest of our ingredients. And then I'm gonna turn the stove top down and let the orzo cook right here on the stove top, or you can transfer this to the oven as well. All right, so we'll put in our beans. Like I said, whatever kind of bean you want, or you could add in um, chicken or sausage. Probably you want it pre-cooked at this point. I'm gonna add in our tomatoes. You can use regular tomatoes or fire roasted. We have two cups of orzo, which is a kind of a pasta. It's not a rice, it's a pasta. And we have two cups of broth. You can use veggie broth, you can use chicken broth, whatever you prefer. So I'm just gonna let this keep on cooking right here. Again, you could transfer this to the oven and let it bake, or you can finish it off right here on the stove top. I'm just gonna let that cook until all the water is absorbed into the orzo. And then I'm gonna add in some spinach. So I've got about five, six ounces of spinach. I don't know, I didn't really measure it <laughs> already here. Now I could add this in at the end. And again, that cooks very quickly. And so you don't have to add it in in the beginning of your cooking. But one thing I like to do with my spinach is to chop it up with my salad choppers so that everything is nice and fine and combines really well. And you don't get that long stringy piece of spinach. In fact, the spinach looks a little bit more like seasoning than anything else. So I'm just gonna chop this up with my salad choppers here, which I love to use on meat to shred that up as well. That's really a good way to use your salad choppers. So once that's all finished cooking, I'm gonna add in the spinach, mix it around, you can top it with some olives, some feta cheese if you want. I think I'm gonna add in some Parmesan today. So that is our baked orzo, which you can bake in the oven or leave it right there on the stove top. Let me know if you have any questions.